They've come from far and wide here to McKinney, Texas, in the Dallas suburbs. A 17 hour drive from Big Rapids, Michigan, a quaint 12 hours from Golden, Colorado, where the nation's best Division II player resides. Quarterback John Matoka of Colorado School of Mines, winner of the Harlan Hill Trophy, known as the D2 Heisman. His ore diggers in the national title game for the first time against Tony and East's Bulldogs. The top dogs in all of Division II won the championship on this field a season ago, blasting Valdosta State. They'll look to go back to back while Mines tries to spoil the national championship party. Welcome to the Division II National Football Championship. From McKinney ISD Stadium in Texas, it is Colorado School of Mines making its first appearance in 131 years of football in the title game against Ferris State, the defending national champion. Blowout wins in last week's semis for these teams. Ferris a second half shutout against West Florida and Mines with eight sacks in a win over Shepard. It is a terrific matchup, a terrific day for football. Kevin Brown, former Georgia quarterback, Hudson Mason. A, a game that's just oozing and overflowing with storylines. Colorado School of Mines is a little engineering school in the foothills of the mountains in Colorado. Here for the first time against Big Bad Ferris State. Yeah, and, and to me, what is the most fascinating storyline is you got a team at Ferris State who's used to being here. They've been here three of the past four years, looking to go back to back. And then you got Mines, who's never been here and is looking to become the first in program history. They've been playing football for 131 years. And after last night, Matokin winning his version of the Heisman, tonight would be a, a cherry on top for everything. So it should be a special treat. You get the best offensive player versus the best defensive player in the country. Yeah, one and two in the Harlan Hill voting, which again is known as the D2 Heisman. John Matoka won it for Colorado School of Mines. Not just the best quarterback, maybe the most fun player in the nation. Yeah, and you could argue he had his Harlan Hill moment the entire postseason. He's been absolutely unstoppable. 21 touchdowns in the postseason, 17 through the air, four rushing. He's extremely hard to stop and slow down because of what he can do with his arm, but also what he can do with his lower body. And the guy that's going to be charged with slowing him down has been wreaking havoc all season long. 25 and a half sacks for Caleb Murphy. That's an NCAA single season record across all divisions. They'll blitz him from the outside. They use him in a lot of different ways. They'll blitz him up the middle. They'll use him on stunts. It's gonna be a huge challenge today for this offensive line. To figure out where he's at and slow him down. Let's go down to the field for the third member of our team. Morgan Uber is down on the sidelines. Nothing comes easy for Colorado School of Mines. Not even the start to this historic season for Mines. They started the year 0-2. But quarterback John Matoka said those two losses to top five teams in the country just by three points proved that they could compete with anybody in the country. They're thriving off of the newness of being here for the first time. But for the defending national champs, for them, it's all about the experience. They're leaning on that. The nerves are lower and the confidence is higher, guys. They've been here before, not just last year. They've been to the national title game three of the last four seasons, Morgan. They've only won it once. Ferris State trying to go back to back. Mines won and deferred. So it'll be Jacob Click to kick it away. It's a little bit of a shorter one. And CJ Jefferson inside his own 10 will take it out to the 20 yard line for Ferris State. Well, a question for Ferris State, who's going to be the quarterback? That will be the question play in and play out. They'll play at least two. It'll be Mylik Mitchell to start. A junior who began his college career in 2015 at Kent State, was there for a couple of years, was out of football, returned, and found a home at Ferris. We'll see a freshman, Carson Gulker, more the running quarterback later as well, and we'll see a lot of sweeps. He'll give it to Jefferson on the ground often and a good pickup for C.J. Jefferson to start the game. So it'll be a quarterback rotation. There is a cliche in football, Hudson, that if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. <laughs> Tony Anise disagrees with that, but his theory is how many point guards play the whole game in basketball, so he'll rotate frequently. If you have two, you have none. What's the theory if you have four, then, then what do you have? But 
for for Tony and Nice. It's worked. It's certainly different. A two quarterback system. They've got three to four quarterbacks that have taken significant snaps this year. Mitchell a little bit more of the passer. Golker a little bit more of the runner. Running back is Marcus Taylor. He'll take it. Taylor bursting through the middle has a first down. The slippery 5'9 senior from Orlando, a converted wide receiver in his first year of running back. Yeah, first year, right? I mean, he hasn't played a lot of running back his first year, four years on campus. They were looking for some more consistency out of the position. Came into the year really with zero experience running the ball as a downhill runner, but they have found a solution at the running back position, and he's helped this run game take the next step. Harris State, a major running team. He'll run it for third play here, and a broken tackle for Taylor. Bursting across midfield into Mines territory and written down all the way at the 35 by Nolan Reed. 29 yards on the play for Marcus Taylor. Hey, you can see the left side of this defensive line, number nine right here, Mac Mahinahan, kind of loses a little bit of, of contain. And if you don't have your eyes in the right place at the right time, Marcus Taylor has that home run threat where he can take what should be a small gain and turn it into a big play. Jameer Knight, the running back here. It'll be Mitchell on the keeper. A slippery runner in his zone, right? Another first down, pick up a 14. It's just a quarterback power. You're wrapping the guard. You're reading that defensive end. If he takes that running back upfield, then the quarterback is going to pull that. And this is where the plus one runs with the quarterback using his legs becomes really hard to stop if you're Trip Thomas. This is why this offense has been so hard to defend this year is those quarterback runs. Five plays, five runs. Taylor inside and finally a stop for very little. Adrian Moreno. One yard play to Mike Linebacker with a tackle of four miles. See, when, you, when you think Tony and Nice football, traditionally in years past, you have thought offense, offense, offense. Last year, they used their court, lose Jared Bernhardt, who's now off the NFL quarterback that helped them win the championship last year, and four new quarterbacks this year. And Malik Mitchell has certainly coming into the game, have been known as a little bit more of the passer here early on, seeing him get his legs involved. It's a big fall start on Marcus Taylor, who jumped about three yards over the line. Dwight Niebling, our referee, with a call. It's a Ferris State team that is 15th in the country, 217 yards rushing per game. They're only 72nd in pass yards per game at just 210. They may have to throw it on one of these downs here on second and 14. It's a three-man rush against Mitchell. He will throw it, find an open target down inside the five. It's Des Libertis. And Libertis will set up first and goal after a gain of 22, just his 13th catch of the season. This is the, the challenge when you decide to rush three is if you can't get to the quarterback, the quarterback can buy some times with his legs, and that puts a lot of stress on your secondary to hold up a little longer. That time, Mitchell feels the pocket, steps up, steps out, buys a little time, finds a soft spot in his zone for a big play. This is where Ferris State will switch quarterbacks. So bring in Carson Gulker, who's basically the closer. Evan Cummins, who can play quarterback, tight end, running back, is next to him in the backfield. Now motions out. And Gulker will take it straight ahead, drive toward the end zone, and he will score. Carson Gulker with his 29th rushing touchdown. He ices the drive after Mitchell leads Ferris State on the first six plays. And a dominant start for the Bulldogs here in the D2 title game. What an opening drive. You bring in Mitchell to start the game. Use his legs a little bit more than what we've seen in weeks past. Find some success running the football. Get down close to the goal line where they've been an elite team all year. Bring in Golker, who what a story Golker has been. Wasn't even on the radar to even play at the beginning of the year, and he's playing a huge role here throughout the playoffs. Eddie Jewett's extra point makes it 7-0. Been a little bit of a tighter playoff run this season in terms of margin of victory, but Ferris State Looks every bit the dominant team it is. No third downs needed in an opening drive score.
Think of Alabama in FBS, North Dakota State in FCS. Ferris State maybe doesn't have the same national championship pedigree, but they're that kind of program. Five semifinals in the last six seasons. Three national championship appearances in the last four years. Lost to Valdosta State in 2018, and then bludgeoned Valdosta State by 41 points a season ago. Tony Adiz pointed out to us yesterday, his team has lost four regular season games since October 19, 2013. Few playoff losses in there, but this is the best program right now in Division II, and they can really seal that with a second straight national title. Yeah, I mean, they, they've been here a ton. They're nothing short of a dynasty, what Tony Adiz has done in building this program and getting to this point. I think the one thing, though, Kevin, that kind of sits in their crawl a little bit is getting to this point and, and winning more championships. Obviously, they got one last year, but you mentioned it, three out of four last appearances. They want to go back to back. It's a short kick. Mines will take it with Sean Roberts. And we will get to see the most explosive offense in Division Two. Colorado School of Mines averaging 46.7 points per game. And John Matoka is the man at the controls. These are his statistics in the postseason. He's got 21 total touchdowns in the playoffs alone. On the year, he's thrown for 50, run for five. And again, he won the Harlan Hill Award last night for the best player in Division II. And, and rightfully so. I mean, his postseason numbers alone speak for themselves. He, he really could have won the Harlan Hill just in the postseason. 21 overall touchdowns. He's been fun to watch and, and hard to contain. He's got 2,000-yard receivers, 1,000-yard rusher. That's Mike Zeman. And it'll be Matoka to throw it. Loading up for a deep one. On the first play, there is contact and a flag. Max McLeod was the intended target coming off a three-touchdown game. And Sintel Williams grabbed him. Pass interference, number 24, defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. You know, I thought Williams got a little handsy at the very end and really didn't need to. I, I thought it was going to be an overthrow. We'll take a second look at it. But I thought right at the last second, he kind of reaches. And really, it looks more like their feet got tangled up. I think very much that could have been a no call and a no. Just let it play out right there. But Matoka does throw a great, a great deep ball. On the run, a look for Josh Johnston. That's going behind him. So Matoka will start 0 for 1 after a penalty and an incompletion. Senior captain, he's a computer science major on a roster where just about everybody is a computer science major or a mechanical engineering major or maybe a chemical engineering major. It's Brandon Moore, the Mines head coach. He said yesterday, it's all Dungeons and Dragons and World of Warcraft with these kids. They are nerds and they embrace that. I'm glad you got that reference because it went over my head. <laughs> You're not a big D&D guy. That's incomplete. Late break on the play. Tristan Smith was the target, and Jacarvis Alexander nearly jumped the route. And Matoka and Mines quickly in a third and long. Yeah, Smith just a step late here. Otherwise, it could have been a pick six. This ball's on the right hash, and the ball's in the air for a very long time. Matoka has a strong enough arm to get it out there. He just Smith with his eyes in the right place, and, and lucky that that ball was a bit late. Otherwise, it could have been an interception. Ferris State, the second most sacks in the nation at 60. Mine's the only team with more, but right now they've got to stop this Bulldogs front. Third and 10, they bring five, and Matoka gets away from pressure, heaves it up, and it's incomplete. McLeod well defended on the play. Vincent Cooley. A 6-1 sophomore from Detroit with his team leading 10th pass breakup of the year. Well, it's not always just about sacks. And Caleb Murphy has had a ton of sacks. It's, it can be about pressure, especially on money downs like this. They show three, but they bring two extra rushers, and it forces Matoka to have to kind of drift back in the pocket, which if you can get a quarterback to move his feet, especially on a predictable passing situation, that can be just as good. It's a very low punt. Takes a good mind's bounce. Jacob Flick, who is the kicker and punter, ends up with a 41-yard kick as he keeps it away from Marcus Taylor. I think that's going to be a big storyline and kind of a game within the game today is obviously Caleb Murphy is going to draw a ton of attention uh, with all the sacks that he's had this year, 25 and a half. But 
you know, the, the front is really what makes this Ferris State defense go. They, they get a lot of focus on, on Murphy, but Jones and Bradford and Oladipo have gotten a lot of sacks and create a lot of pressure. Can they force Matoka to throw in accurately without sacking him? A lot of movement before this play. May have been the left tackle, Gio Agazi, who jumped first. Ball start, number 52, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. If there's a weakness for Ferris State, it's penalties. They average nine penalties, 80 yards per game. It's 14th most penalties per game in Division II, and they've already been hit for three. Miley Mitchell with a first and 15. Mitchell with a quick toss. This is C.J. Jefferson, his leading receiver, and Jefferson only gets a couple of yards. It's not an offense that is necessarily built, at least this year, to play behind the sticks. They're a, a run-first offense this year, uh, play great defense. They, they don't have a ton of high-powered explosive plays through the perimeter and through the run game, but you look at that first drive, I mean, they didn't get into one-third down. And really, it was as good as you could get for an opening drive. One thing they stayed away from, though, was penalties and long, predictable situations like this one. It's a handoff. Room to run for Taylor again. There is just such a burst in his step. Marcus Taylor with 13, right near the sticks, and he appears to have enough. Set coach down. They find him as the tone setter, and I mean, you can feel his presence here early on. I mean, there's no wasted movement. He doesn't dilly bat around. He sees the hole. He hits it. It's just a little bit short. It'll be third and one, and they'll give it right back to Taylor, who does pick it up off the right side this time on the first third down try of the game. I mean, it was it was second and 13, and they run the ball. And you know you, you've got a lot of confidence in your run game when most teams in the down and distance in second and 13 are going to throw it, try to get half of that yardage back. Ferris State decides to run it. They pick up 12 and then run tempo on third and short. I mean, there's such conviction in the way they decide to move the football, and it's predominantly through running it. First down throw, a quick one, and just about as quick of a tackle. Strong wrap up for Mason Pierce, a redshirt senior, the All-American, all over Des Libertas for a gain of just a couple. Pierce. Impressed man there. That's probably a look where, where Mitchell needs to hand it off at that corner's more soft and you throw that option route there that that hitch route to the boundary but as hard as as Pierce was that, that should be a ball that's handed off 10 times out of 10 for Mitchell the low snap got away Mitchell got on top of it looked like there was a Ferris State player running in front of Mitchell as the snap came in Brady Rose, the slot receiver right there, got in the way. Yeah, just miscommunication on the timing. You're trying to use that, that speed jet sweep as a decoy and ends up hitting him in the head, and they're lucky to get back on it. So third down and 11. Just the second third down try this first quarter for Ferris. Lines will rush for Mitchell will lose the ball again and get on top of it again. It was Zach Hester right down the gut for his sixth sack of the season. There is a flag down at the 28 yard line as well. It's a loss of 20 as it stands. Holding number 64 offense. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. That's the center, Maru Hamad. And the first sack for a mind defense, which had eight against Shepard last week. Well, the movement creates the sack. Hester lines up pre-snap on the outside, right outside the tackle. But after the ball snap, watch him loop around here. He gets two picks from interior defensive linemen, which sets up a straight shot at the quarterback, Mitchell. And that is one thing that Ferris State has struggled with this year. If you study their pass game, is movement up front. Quentin Beck waited a long time to get that one out. And Mize is going to have terrific field position. Punt of 35. Mines will start its second drive in Ferris State territory when we return to the national title game. Media timeout. 
131st season of football for Colorado School of Mines out of Golden, Colorado. And last year, made it to the semis and lost to Valdosta State by three. This season started 0-2, losing to Grand Valley State and Angelo State by three. Then the next week, they won 84-10. Poor Adam State is on the wrong end of that. They haven't lost since. The Ore Diggers have scored 30 or more in their last 13 games. 42 points or more in 11 of those 13 games. They're outscoring opponents 700 to 274. Scored 80 points twice. Ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Brandon Moore, the first year head coach, defensive guy, has been enjoying this. Mike Zeman, running back, gets piled on for loss of a yard on that first play. Morgan, what did you see on that first drive with John Matoka? Yeah, the last time that the Mines defense was on the field with quarterback Don Matoka, he was on the sidelines being treated by trainers. He has two nicks on his right thumb and a gash on the knuckle of his index finger bleeding. Pretty good with that training staff. Dropped some medicine on it. Tried to get the bleeding to stop his teammates coming up to him, asking him if he was okay. But that even keeled tough guy is, of course, Matoka shook it right off, guys. Morgan, we saw the play right there. He got hit by Larry Oladipo. So an 0 for 3 start. Sometimes when quarterbacks are when the ball's coming out, in, in that case, he's, you're finishing your throw. The hand lands right on the face mask of Bola Depot. It can be nasty and painful. Matoka lofts this one here to Josh Johnson, his first completion. Sintel Williams, the seventh-year senior, runs him out of bounds after a gain of six. You're seeing it here early on. I mean, Ferris State's getting a lot of pressure very quickly on him and, and it's it's not necessarily sacks but early on you just really want to hit the quarterback you want to hit him often and that time there he throws the ball with anticipation and gets it out but that, that's something to watch here Caleb Murphy 25 and a half sacks but they come in fair state getting a lot of pressure on opposing quarterbacks Murphy standing up at the top of the screen here he comes but Toka gets rid of it in time but incomplete into a tight area for Max McLeod Mines has a fourth down decision to make. You can tell Matoka's trying to throw that back shoulder ball to McLeod and, and just not on the same page quick enough. When that linebacker is playing over the top, the right idea where you want to place it, that back shoulder ball kind of hold him up, just not on the same page. Mines will punt with Jacob Click. Matoka is one for five for six yards. Let's see if Click can pin Ferris State. That punt may not necessarily do it. We'll wait to see where this one is spotted. It's going to be up around the 20. Third drive for Ferris State when we return to Texas. Third drive for Ferris State. National champions from a season ago, 14-0. Only lost this year one point to Grand Valley State, a team they then beat in the quarterfinals here in this postseason run. C.J. Jefferson, a quick hitter from Miley Mitchell on first down. It's been mostly Mitchell in this game. One play of Carson Gulker for a touchdown run near the goal line. That's what Ferris State does, and that's what they've done for a few years. Yeah, they, they certainly will play different quarterbacks. You, you don't see this type of approach a lot, but it works for, for Tony Anise. His quarterback philosophy says he does it all off of instincts. It reminds me a little bit of the old school days with Steve Spurrier, where if you played for him, you didn't know when you were going in and how many plays you were going to play. He just kind of said, hey, we're, we're going to decide play by play, but it works for him. Second down, it'll be Brady Rose here. Rose got drilled. Just shy of the 30. Big hit delivered, and Jaden Williams, who delivered the hit, appears to have taken the worst of it. Officials timeout for an injured defensive player. It's a five-yard play. Rose and Williams with a hard collision, and Jaden Williams, starting safety, is down. Rose listed at just 5'8", 175. Able to deliver enough force to knock down Williams, who is back on his feet. Good sign to see Williams walk off on his own. I'm certain he'll check him out on the sideline, make sure everything's all right. But he comes flying in from that safety position, full speed. and Clean hit. Doesn't, doesn't hit Rose, it looks like, in the helmet. So. Leads with that, that left shoulder pad. Williams 
Williams will take a seat for now. Third and a yard as James Colby takes the backfield next to Mitchell. And Mitchell will throw it. That's unusual on third and one for Ferris State. And Mines not quite prepared for C.J. Jefferson to be that open. It's a gain of 14. Uh, third and one, the analytics will tell you they're going to be heavy run, but they break that up. Given Mitchell the opportunity pre-snap, if that safety, which he was for Mines, is playing that soft, just stand up and rip the quick out route. And when you can start to break up some of the predictability in third yardage uh, situations with running and passing, boy, it just takes your offense to the next level. First down to play fake to Taylor, and Mitchell goes down again. Second sack for Mines. Hayden Gregg, the red shirt sophomore from Kansas City, got him down. Gregg's going to come from that linebacker position, that stack formation from the second level. Again, there's a little bit of movement, a twist up front. And what that does is it occupies the left guard, left tackle for Ferris State, which allows Gregg to come scot-free, untouched, and get the sack. Asked Tony and East about Mines' defense. He said they run to the ball like all 11 are on a mission to make the play. Their energy is scary. Mitchell on a draw here. Reaches out to the 40-yard line. My league Mitchell gets some of it back, about seven. It'll be third and long. The negative plays really are the only thing so far here early in the first quarter that have kind of bitten this Ferris State offense. And then they get into some of these predictable passing situations, which is just not really a world that they've lived in all year. And, and you could even argue that they're really not built. In situations like this, they're going to have to have time to allow their quarterback to find an open guy down the field. Mines playing press coverage. I mean, you see all these Mines DBs right here. They are walked up, every single one of them, in the face of these receivers for Ferris State. Play clock down to three. Mitchell got it off. Mitchell trying to break free, and Mitchell is dropped to the backfield again. Zach Hester, who had the first sack of the game, brought him down. It's a tackle for a loss of two, and a couple of big negative plays force Ferris to punt. This Mines defensive front has caused problems on opposing quarterbacks all year, whether it be with call blitzes, movement up front, and the movement right now is giving this Bulldog offensive line a ton of problems. This Mines defense came in averaging five sacks per game in the postseason. They had 69 sacks, which led all of college football coming in to there alone on that drive. Another very low punt from Quentin Beck. And this will roll down to the 21. Kick of 41 yards. Week 15, Monday night football from Lambeau Field. Baker Mayfield made quite the splash in his Rams debut last Thursday with a late comeback against the Raiders. He'll take on Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay. 8 Eastern, 7 Central, ESPN, ABC, ESPN Deportes, ESPN Plus, and Nathan Eli's Manning cast on ESPN 2. We knew coming in it was going to be the story of great offense versus great defense. Mine's offense versus Bulldogs defense. So far, the story for me has been Ferris State's defensive line getting pressure on John Matoka. Matoka has thrown five passes, now six. He's completed one and nearly had two picked. Tristan Smith, the wide receiver, just in payout, nearly jumped in. Yeah, I think Murphy got his hand on it. We'll sprint out action to the left. Caleb Murphy gets his hand up there and tips it. Some of your numbers defensively for Ferris State. Second in the country in sacks per game, only behind Mines. Second best third down defense. They're second in the nation, yards per play allowed, just 3.8. Mines gains nearly seven yards per play. Matoka harried again, and Matoka dragged down. Jordan Jones has the first Ferris State sack of the game. Five and a half now for the senior defensive tackle. Yeah, and Jones is a kid who's been overshadowed all year by the accomplishments of Caleb Murphy. But you see there, two Mines offensive linemen committed to block and Murphy. Well, what does that do? That means somebody's got a one-on-one -on -one pass rushing situations that they have to win. See, two guys on Murphy right there, which leaves the right guard, Steel Petty, one-on-one -on -one with Jordan Jones, and Jones gets the best of them. I wonder how Murphy has so many sacks. It's because of guys like Jones. No doubt. Third and a mile for Mines. 
Matoka pressured again with just a four man rush. He'll try to make something happen with his legs. And Matoka is upended. The ball is out. Matoka's argument is that he was down, which would put him right near first down yardage. It was recovered by Mines. Max McLeod, the wide receiver, picked it up. And this ball will be spotted where McLeod picked it up. So it's going to be short of a first down by three yards. Yeah, it, 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 and it's because what you said, Kevin, where the ball's picked up, Matoka never is down here. See, he goes to dive for the first down marker, but he was never down. And so the ball Rolling is still the live. Fumble recovered by the offense. Previous plays under further review. Oh, that's going to be closer than I originally thought, which is going to be good news for Mines. I think that's going to be really close to a first down, if not. I love the decision there by Matoka, understanding where the distance he needs to get to, third and a mile. You know, if that's... If he needs four or five more yards there, I would say just run out of bounds and punt. But he knew where he was. He knew the difference was probably going to be in diving or not. He goes for it. And I originally thought that the ball had come out, but that's they're going to take a second look at that because it's certainly closer to that right elbow where it is in relation to ball still in his hand, ball still in his hand. The forearm is not down. Has to be knee or elbow. So right there, does he still have control of the ball is the Ooh. question. Man, that is going to be close. There is replay in the semis and final for Division Two, not typically during the season, but we have it here, and that could end up being a game changer for mine. Brian Thompson is our replay official. I mean, you are, you're looking for that elbow, and our production crew is doing such a great job right here of slow. You see it right there, forearm, forearm, that elbow in the back right there. You can still see some green turf underneath it. After reviewing the play, the runner was down in possession of the ball. We'll respot the football to the 30-and-a-half yard line where it's fourth down. So he is down. Mines gets a couple of yards, but they still will be short. And Brandon Moore will punt from his own 30 and a half yard line. Yeah, a difference in really fourth and one, maybe even fourth and inches. It's so close and, and being fourth and three. And you got to respect and love the grittiness, the toughness, though, of Matoka going for that there early in the game. Understand it. Some people will say, hey, quarterback needs a slide. I, I like him going for it there, knowing where the sticks are. Line drive punt to Taylor, who's an excellent returner. And Taylor has an excellent return. Got a block across the 20, and he is tripped up. Click the putter got in the way, but a major return for Marcus Taylor down to the 11-yard line. A punt of 32, a return of 55. But Kevin, you, you, you can't kick a low-line drive to as lethal as a punt returner as Taylor is. The problem with this punt is there was no hang time on it. Oh, is there a late flag down? Dwight Niebling's going to have a call During here. Maybe return, a block in the back. Holding number 16, receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Ferris State. That'll be a hold instead. Deion Small. Here. You see the punt here. I mean, you have to allow your gunners an opportunity to get down the field and cover. And because it's a low line drive, I mean, I bet the hang time on that kick was less than two and a half, if not two seconds. And when you've got a guy as as dangerous and can change the game at any moment as Taylor, you've, the, the conversation on the sideline to click has to be talking about getting more hang time. So that wipes out a 55 yard return. Running play for Zamir Knighton on first down. And Knighton wrestled down. Jaden Williams back on the field after missing a play. It's a gain of eight as we go under a minute in the first quarter. Ferris State hurt by four penalties, hurt by a couple of negative plays. When they haven't allowed sacks, when they have moved the ball forward, they've moved it forward very well. Mines with just 14 total yards in this first half. The nation's number one scoring offense. It's 
Second down give to Taylor. So hard to find sometimes in between those tackles. Listed at 5'9", 175, Marcus Taylor, and maybe a little bit shorter than that even. Tony Anise told us, I've never seen a human being work so hard. Marcus Taylor, he said, is in the top 1% of work ethic of anybody who's ever played the game. And his team's going to have a third and one on the right side of midfield when we return. Great energy in this stadium, terrific fan support. That's the end of the first quarter. And Ferris State in control after one. An opening drive touchdown for the Bulldogs, looking to defend their national championship. They've got the lead after 15 here in McKinney, Texas. We asked Tony Anise yesterday, what should the nation know about Ferris State? Folks that are seeing you for the first time. He said they should know this. Only four teams have won 11 games or more in the last eight seasons, not including the short 2020 at all divisions. North Dakota State, which is going back to the title game in FCS. Bama, Ohio State, and Ferris State. The Bulldogs had a big Rapids, Michigan. 13-1 and and looking for another national title. And they'll get a first down to start this second quarter with Carson Golker straight ahead. We asked Tony Anise, what is the formula for this? How do you build a championship program? He said something I have never heard a head coach say. Love is the catalyst of our greatness. He said love gives us power and strength and belief. We coach with that kind of love. Our former players reach out all the time. And they always end their texts or phone calls with love you coach. Here's Mitchell in some big trouble. Got away from the first rusher. Across the field, he hits Brady Rose. Rose across the 25, slicing it back. Rose going for a wild ride, and he's in the red zone, picking up 30 yards. Well, a free blitzer comes straight off the edge in the face of Mitchell. It's Mac Mahinahan. His opportunity to sack Mitchell makes a miss and makes a big time play with his legs, but also his arm. Minahan race back for the tackle two. Inside to Taylor, who stumbles forward for a couple yards. Well, he came in thinking that we we're gonna talk a lot about Matoka's lower half, but so far it's been it's been Mitchell, right? The free blitzer right off the edge. And he's able to get outside of it. And the thing I love, keeping his eyes downfield to deliver a strike. Taylor drilled out of bounds near the sideline. Third and long for Ferris State coming up. Mason Pierce knocked him out. You know, Mitchell, when I was down there looking at him in, in pregame, he's a lot bigger than, than I originally thought. 6'4", big lower half, listed at 205. Upperclassman has played a lot of a good football. And you know he's really the perfect type of, of guy and quarterback for this moment in a championship game. Coach said he's calm, confident, got a low heart rate, has played in a lot of big moments like this. We'll throw it on third down, incomplete. It was dropped by Taylor. Mitchell hit Taylor in the hands for what would have been a second touchdown. Yeah, he finds the exact matchup you want. Taylor on a linebacker there, running back on a Right there in the slot, he gets inside. Great kind of hesitation move, and he beats Williams on the inside. That's what Williams is taught right there. Do not get beat inside, yet he does, and he puts it right in the face mask of Taylor, and he just drops it. Hines runs a player up the field late. Eddie Jewett will try from 33. And Jewett drills it. It's a three-point possession. It was a four-point drop, though, by Taylor. The lead is 10 for Ferris State. Both these teams have won multiple Harlan Hill trophies. Again, that goes to the best player in D2. Chad Freehop led the Mines to their first playoff appearance in 2004. Jason Vanderlaan went back-to-back -back for Ferris State. He set the NCAA record for rushing yards by a quarterback. Justin Dvorak the next year for Mines, the nation's leading passer. And then Jairu Campbell, who led Ferris to the national championship game in 2018. Add another gunslinger to the list. John Matoka last night, 
awarded the Harlan Hill Trophy. Very emotional, sitting with all his teammates, his minds prepared for today's game. But so far, the Harlan Hill Award winner has thrown for six yards. Whether or not Ferris State's defense took that personally, Caleb Murphy coming in second. They have not lacked for motivation. They have not lacked for disruption. And they have held the nation's highest scoring offense to 14 yards on nine plays. Jack Lowry from inside his own five. Lowry out across the 20 for Mines. We check back in with Morgan. Mines quarterback John Matoka, he doesn't like to slide. He's not afraid to get physical or take a hit. We saw him flip trying to get that first down and unable to do so. He came off the sidelines, guys, visibly frustrated, throwing his helmet on the ground, but then immediately yelling, I'm humble, I'm humble. The Harlan Hill winner has looked locked in here on the sidelines, looked really focused, not really talking to any of his teammates here when the defense was out on that field. Morgan, uh, it was interesting yesterday, Brandon Moore told us he doesn't like John Matoka to run as much as John does. But he said, I give him one hit and then I start yelling at him. Well, he's a, he's a defensive guy. Defensive guys never want their quarterbacks to run, right? They want them they want to get down, protect themselves. And, and uh, you know, look, it's a championship game. There's nothing to save yourself for, so I'm all right with it. He got the one hit, and he was a little bit short on the last play. There's an injured Mines player right now. We'll give you a report when we return after the injury here in McKinney. Injured player was backup linebacker Hall Edmonds. A moment ago, helped off the field and into the injury tent. I think he got rolled up on in the kickoff for Colorado School of Mines. So the Ordiggers offense, nation's best, 47 points per game coming into this one. Three straight, three and outs. And John Matoka has completed one pass in three drives. Mike Zeman is the running back on first down. He'll look to throw it again. Matoka will complete his second this time to Mason Karp. What have you seen from Ferris defensively and from Matoka with his arm? Well, Ferris playing extremely aggressive right now. They're putting five in the box to slow down the run, and they're playing man outside. And look, that's when it works, it works really great. But you can also get beat over the top with some of the speed. But so far, it's that philosophy here early on to be really aggressive and play man on the outside has worked for Ferris. And they've created a lot of havoc and pressure on John Matoka. And it's just not Caleb Murphy. Other guys, Oladipo, Jones getting involved. Murphy from the backside here trying to track him down, and he does. The nation's leader in sacks, Caleb Murphy, gets the quarterback for no game. Yeah, it, I think the best compliment you can give him here is it, it's a run, and look at him chase down the quarterback from the other side of the play. I mean, that's what NFL scouts are going to love. Anybody can rush the passer when you, when you know it's a pass, but are you a three-down guy? That's ultimately what scouts and GMs are going to look at at the next level, and that's what makes him a complete player. Gained about 60 pounds since he started in college. The thought is he is a next level player. Third down, Matoka in trouble and sacked again. Connor Near, their best linebacker who stepped up as a sophomore this season, brought him down. And it will be a fourth consecutive three and out for Mines. It's, it's really a coverage sack. I mean, that clock goes off so quick in the mind of Matoka, and as soon as he drops his eyes, there's six or seven red hats just swarmed around him. And what a story Connor Neer is. He starts out the year as an outside linebacker. They were looking to find a guy at the middle linebacker position, that Mike Backer, that they didn't have to take off the field in predictable passing situations. They moved Neer from outside to inside, and he has stayed ever since, and he's been a big part uh, of that defense and the success story all season long. Kick off your Week 15 NFL Sunday tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern, with a countdown crew on ESPN and the ESPN app. All the early breaking stories, injury updates, and previews right up to kickoff. Great support for Ferris State. These two teams sold out their allotments of reserve tickets to 2,000 plus. There are a lot more than 2,000 Mines fans. They've had an amazing turnout here. 
Here's a backwards pass. Brady Rose throws it, and he hits a wide open C.J. Jefferson down to the 10. The converted quarterback, Rose, who is a Michigan Mr. Football finalist at quarterback two years ago, hits Jefferson for 50 on the trick play. A little double pass, throw the bubble screen, and everybody's going to jump up on it. And that other receiver, C.J. Jefferson, comes off slow, acting like he's going to block, and just slips to the back wide open. I love the play call on the down and distance, first and 10, but also the way that Tony Anissa set it up. That play works because of all the bubble screens that you have thrown in the first quarter. Getting those eyes uh, of some of the corners and guys in the secondary to bite up on that, it's a great play call, great timing of the play call by Tony Anise. We're gonna time out after the play. Called by Ferris State. 30 seconds in length. Brady Rose out of Muskegon, Michigan. He played quarterback in high school. He also played wide receiver. He was also one of their leading tacklers, punt returner, kick returner, punter, holder, and at one point, long snapper. So when we tell you he's got 14 tackles on the year, 18 catches, nine carries, and a completion, that's just the kind of guy he's always been. He's their Swiss Army knife. He can do a little bit of everything. And, you know, I think the team kind of embodies that. They, they've got a bunch of guys that, that I kind of call Band-Aid guys. And, you know, Band-Aid guys are guys that you can put here, and they're a solution. You can put them over here, and they're a solution. You, they have a bunch of guys that are just they're just football players. And I, I think sometimes we get lost of recruiting rankings and talking about what position is this guy going to play. At the end of the day, like, Fair State has just 22 great football players on the field. Right now they have Carson Gulker at quarterback. With a goal-to-go -go opportunity. Gulker, they are running quarterback. They'll run it. Tripped up after a short game by Mac Minahan, the senior sixth-year linebacker. Carson Gulker now with 29 rushing touchdowns after his score in the first, leading all of college football, every division. He ran for three last week, broke the Ferris State single season record. Tony Anise told us he was not even on the radar at the start of the season, but Mitchell had some injury woes. So did Evan Cummins. And Gulker has become an invaluable part of this team. Play clock down to three. Gulker fakes it to Rose. Up the gut and stood up at the five. First man there was Cameron Reller, big number 95. It'll be third and goal from the five, and Mitchell will return to play quarterback. Yeah, and a big third down here in, in the second quarter. Last drive, Fair State was down here. Should have had a touchdown, and, and Marcus Taylor dropped a wide-open touchdown catch, and so Mines dodged the bullet there. It, let's see what they try to do because the difference in forcing a field goal here versus giving up a touchdown feels like a big difference. Mitchell motions Rose. Fakes it, lost it, back with it, and through the hands of Rose. It looked like he was trying to hit Rose right away, and if he didn't fumble that snap, he may have had a touchdown, Hudson. Yeah, well, it, it falls out of his hand. When he goes to throw to Rose, Rose is wide open immediately in the flat. And if he gets it, see, it just slips out of his hand. He's kind of flipping the ball to go throw it, and it just falls as, as he flips it right there. Mitchell, it, it falls out of his hand, and if he gets it out cleanly, it was a touchdown. It was a nice design. Rose sneaked out into the flat and Mines again. Forces a field goal. 22 yards away for Jewett. Ferris State is dominating. They've had a couple of mishandles on the last two drives to keep him out of the end zone, though. Still a two-score game. Well, it could be 21-0, and if you're a Ferris State fan, missed opportunities are only part of the story. It is 13-0, a touchdown and two field goals for Tony Anise's Bulldogs. What a job he's done in his 10 years now at Ferris State. Has won 87% of his games. Huge fan support has built throughout Tony Anise's time in the program. Winning his coach in Ferris State history, and he was a high school coach for about 25 years, a high school teacher 
three years at Grand Rapids Community College after four different high school jobs. It is a football life well lived and a journey well traveled and it has led him to this school. His son, Steve, is the offensive coordinator. His nephew, Tony, the co-defensive coordinator. Much creativity in the Anise family. You have two Tonys on the coaching staff. But it's one of the great programs in the nation regardless of level. And I go back to what Tony and East talked with us about yesterday. The power of love and coaching with love. It's a little atypical for a college football coach to say. It is. I mean, yeah, I think he views his job. Uh, I know he views his job as more than a coach. He's he's, he's in the business of, of transforming young people, and he just so happens to, to have won a lot of football games in, in the process. But you, know, you talk about all the success as many times as Ferris State's been here. I think you quarter and a half, Kevin, you, you're seeing that. One team looks like they're playing loose, and the other team – Minds, who's here for the first time in program history, looks tight. It just doesn't look like the same uh, great offense that we've seen all season long. John Matoka has been completely neutralized. He'll go for a deep ball here. Incomplete. Josh Johnson tightly guarded by Sidney McLeod. And Matoka is two for eight. Yeah, I mean, tight coverage again on the outside. It's, it's a pretty good ball. Ball's outside. Given your receiver somewhat of a chance, Josh Johnston, uh, to, to make the catch, but McLeod with even better coverage. I mean, you, they've had, Mines has now had three straight drives of three and outs. They, they've got to find a way to just get a first down. Not a touchdown, a first down. Back on the ground, here's Zeman. Maybe they can get something going with Mike Zeman. A former walk-on who finished fourth in Harlan Hill voting a season ago. is the Mines all-time leader. 65 total touchdowns, more than 4,400 rushing yards. A guy who has over 1,200 yards this year, 21 touchdowns, has basically, like you said, broken every rushing statistical stat category there is. His name is under it in Mines football history. This is a down that... So far, that Mines has struggled in. They, they've got to find a way to, to for a receiver to get some space. Design run from Atoka to the right side. He's very close, but I think a little bit short of a first down. That ball's going to be spotted at the 34 and a half. Do you punt again here if your Mines, or at some point you have to go for it? You know, I, I would seriously consider going for this and quarterback sneaking it. This is the second time today that Mines has had it fourth and one or less. They're going to keep the offense out there. That looks like Zeman ready for a direct snap. Ferris has everybody in the box. It's straight up power football, and it's a first down for Colorado School of Mines. They went full on smash mouth, and the Mines crowd is going crazy. Their first first down since their first play of the game. This is a team that scored 80 points in two games this year, and they just got their first first down of the game uh, a quarter and a half in, and you can just kind of feel a little bit of the, of the stress and the, and the tense in the stadium just kind of dissolve. The cloud motions, Matoka fakes it. Another design run, and Matoka is absolutely stuffed. Larry Oladipo, transfer from Illinois, one of a couple of FBS transfers on his team. It's the fifth tackle for loss today for Ferris. Yeah, he's been active. Oladipo has already two pass breakups. And right now, the biggest mismatch that I see is the, the, the front for Ferris State versus the five offensive linemen for Mines. They are just struggling, not only in the pass game, but to get any movement in the run game. Five receivers for Matoka. Pressured again, and down he goes. Murphy got him. Caleb Murphy, the all-time sack leader in a single season in college football. Tackled for no gain there. It's third and 11. And you can see a, a pretty good clean pocket. I mean, that's as good of a pocket as you're going to find against this great front four. And, and really nowhere to go with the ball. And I, and I think a lot of the, of the pressure, a lot of the hits are starting to to get inside the head of John Matoka. Everybody talks about sacks, and sacks are great, but there's so many other ways that you can affect a quarterback. And sometimes just being around the quarterback a lot 
makes that quarterback feel like the pocket's dirty. In reality, it's not. Gonna rush five against five here, and Matoka is absolutely swallowed up. Another Ferris State sack. Rowing on the field as forward progress is stopped. Fourth down. Murphy's trying to celebrate a touchdown. Forward progress stopped after the sack by Ian Hall. Third of the game for Ferris State. Hall gets in on the sack party now. It's you get a sack, you get a sack. Hall gets a sack. I mean, it's just you can see there one Mississippi like old school football in the backyard before you can even count to two. Matoka is just overwhelmed with Ferris State Bulldogs and have to quickly come up with a different game plan. Seven and a half sacks for Hall and a better punt for Click here, 47 yards on the kick. So three sacks for Ferris State. Caleb Murphy doesn't have one yet, but he's been very active. A couple of tackles right at the line of scrimmage, and Morgan Uber, it's been an amazing story for Caleb Murphy to become the all-time single-season sacks leader. Yeah, we knew it was going to be a, a tall task coming in uh, for offensive coordinator Pete Sturbrick, uh, offensive line coach Tim Brandon. I mean, You've got the best defensive player in the country in Caleb Murphy, but you've also got a power five guy transfer from Illinois and Oladipo who's wreaked a lot of havoc. Jordan Jones, I mean, they have got to figure out a, a different game plan to protect their quarterback on the sideline. Here's Mitchell on first down. Let's go down to Morgan for more on Murphy. Watching Murphy before that last sack, guys, all he was thinking was get to the quarterback. And he actually developed a mantra this offseason in his training. Three to six seconds of complete focus. Every time he rushes the quarterback, that's what he tells him three to six and it's not just the mental aspect it's physical too he was a four sport athlete in high school including wrestling and defensive coordinator Ryan Hodges says that really translates to him having great hands and that first step explosiveness he shows off the line of scrimmage he's made a big big jump Morgan here's an option play it's a pitch to Jefferson who's been involved in the pass game and the run game first down gain of eight for Ferris now all of a sudden they're throwing option plays at you. I mean, I just, I, I don't envy the job that Trip Thomas, the defense coordinator for Mines has. Not only did he have to prepare for like three different quarterbacks and each quarterback could do something different, but now all of a sudden they're running the option. <laughs> I mean, and there's a fourth quarterback, Rose, the wide receiver who threw a 50 yard pass. Mitchell got away from pressure here. Good job to pick up something. Adrian Moreno the stop after a gain of five. And Mitchell's a little bit slow to get up. He looks good. And his legs have been a big storyline today, not only in design quarterback runs, but extending plays. Bringing in Golker here. But it's just so much to prepare for defensively. I mean, I've never seen anything like it in all my years playing and watching football where not only does, does it work with multiple different quarterbacks, but everybody knows their role, everybody embraces their role. I think it speaks to just the entire team attitude for Ferris State offensively. Golker on a second down. He'll run it. Play made quickly by Jack Peterson after no gain. Brian Rock is the quarterback coach at Ferris State. Tony East told us Brian calls him a lunatic for all of the quarterback switches he makes. This one did not work out as Peterson got to it. Tony says, I don't know, I just have instincts. Changes play to play often, drive to drive, and before this third down, a flag. Mitchell will come back in because Prior it's about to, to be snap, third and long. Ball start, number 11, offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Golker didn't allow all of his guys to get, to get set for that full second. But... You know, okay, so Mitchell comes back in, and, and they're in a third and long situation. He's a little bit of the better passer, but this is the scenario that Mines hasn't been able to get them into enough, and now they're going to be called for offsides. Nolan Reeve jumped across the line. Was he coerced there? Offside, number 46. Defense moved into the neutral zone, causing an immediate reaction. Five-yard penalty, third down. You see a little bit of the of the, the difference in the young quarterback and some of the freshmen's mistakes you get with, with Golker. Doesn't allow guys to get set. 
And then the veter veteran savviness of, of my league, the upperclassman who comes in and use a little snap count manipulation to get those five yards back. Hey, freshman, let me, let me show you how to do it here. And he'll stay in there on the third and short. Almost gets him again. Mitchell, who began his career in 2015 at Kent State, took a couple of years away from football. Here at a national title game for the second straight season. Hit as he throws. It's a low one complete to Brady Rose. His big first half continues with a Ferris first down. Jaden Healy from Mines comes flying through and delivers a nice hit on, on Mitchell. But watch the toughness. This is what it takes to play quarterback when you know you're going to get hit. Can you stand in the pocket and deliver a strike? And excuse me, that's Jack Peterson, number 97, interior defensive lineman who gets a clean hit. Not enough and not quick enough on Mitchell. Mitchell hit as he throws again and floats it beautifully. It's the running back, Taylor, who hangs onto it this time. Inside the red zone for the fourth time today. It's a gain of 32. Taylor, who dropped a big touchdown earlier. They go back to him. He leaks right out of the backfield. And no linebacker, no safety covering, just a complete bust. And again, under pressure, Mitchell throws a dime, keeping his running back on the move. Jaden Healy had the pressure this time. Mitchell's decision making has been so good and so quick today. Ball start, number 71, offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Brendan Bingston, the left guard this time. Six penalties and a half for Ferris State. Two timeouts for Ferris State in a minute 25 left in this first half. Quick hitter to Jefferson. Got a block. Inside the 20 and dumped there. Nolan Reed made the play with a minute 14 to go. Mines player a little bit slow to get up behind the play. That is Reeve. And Jefferson leaves in pain as well. Leading receiver C.J. Jefferson. The wide receiver core that's already very banged up. Don't have Tyrese Hunt Thompson, their leading receiver coming into the playoffs, who's out with injury. And CJ Jefferson in this drive. In field goal range, two timeouts. You're in a good spot. Just got to learn to take care of the football. And a timeout taken by Ferris State. They let a lot of time run off the clock there. Bulldogs take their second. One to go. Trying to add on before Time the end of the half out. when we Ferris return. State, second charge. C.J. Jefferson off the field. We're told it's shoulder pain from a contusion. So he is out for this play with 41 seconds to go. Morgan with that report on the sidelines for us. One timeout remaining for Ferris State. Mitchell will keep it on the option. A late pitch inside the 10-yard line. It will be a touchdown, and it is C.J. Jefferson. He stuck in late, and I guess the shoulder feels just fine. 19 yards for Jefferson, who was shaking his shoulder outside the huddle during the whole break. And Ferris State punches in a late first half touchdown. Uh, I'm sure the conversation during the timeout was Tony Anise telling Mitchell, hey, we need you. And he said, coach, I can't catch it. My shoulder's hurt. We don't need you to catch it. We're just going to pitch it to you, and you're going to run. And that was good enough. Again, what was it? It was a triple option element. Zone read, and they pitch it off Mac Minahan, number nine for Mines, and C.J. Jefferson does the rest. Eight plays, 75 yards. Ferris State has absolutely controlled this game from the opening play. Yeah, you see there, Minahan loses leverage on the pitch, and all it takes is to get one step behind the speed of C.J. Jefferson, and it makes you pay. It has been hard to put into words what we've seen in the first half out of this Mines team, especially offensively. Coming in and averaging over 40 points per game. And the news last night that John Matoko won the Harlan Hill, most valuable player for Division II. They just 
have run into an absolute stonewall of a defense so far in Ferris State. Ferris State pissed a second and a half shutout in the semis against West Florida. 21 0 in the second half of that game in the semis. Unless mine scores here, it's going to be 41 0 over the last four quarters in the semis and in the championship game. And if not for a drop by Taylor and a drop grabbing the snap by Mitchell, it could be 28 0 easily. Touchback here reeled in by Lowry. It's been hard for Mines to even just find any sort of rhythm. And, um, you know, what they're going to have to kind of figure out, Pete Sturbeck, offense coordinator and his staff in the second half, is can you continue to ask your quarterback to do drop back? Because the front seven of this Bulldog defense is just suffocating uh, the five offensive linemen for Mines. And, I, you know, it's it's – you're trying to create explosive plays to get back in the game, but the drop back game is just putting a lot of stress on these tackles. Mines does have three timeouts. Matoko will throw it quickly and complete. No, intercepted off the deflection. It's picked off by McLeod. It's an absolute nightmare for Mines. It's an absolute party for Ferris State. Everything that could possibly go wrong for Mines is going wrong now. Out of the hands of Johnson, into the hands of McLeod. 26 straight to start for Ferris State. A little bit of a low ball on a slant pass. Ends up being the reason why the ball is deflected and it lands right in the hands of McLeod for a pick six. Third interception for Sidney McLeod. Tony Anise told us he came to us really as an immature boy. He has grown into a great man. Offside, number 32, defense, penalties decline, try for point is good. And he finds an absolute gift. Deflection from Johnson. Mines just trying to get something before the end of the half. They give up seven, and they are facing a chasm. But it's supposed to be just a little bit of pitch and catch on a slant route. You can see the ball thrown a little bit low to the Mines receiver, and that's that's that that's a difference in him catching it cleanly and getting some yards, and the Mines receiver going down. Ball gets kind of deflected, tipped up in the air, and it lands right in the hands of Sidney McLeod for a pick six. That is... That's the first half it's been for Mines offensively. Just nothing has gone right. They haven't been on the same page. One first down in the first half. It, it, it's hard to put into words what you're watching offensively for a Mines offense that came in just obliterating all defenses in their path. It's just shocking. It, it, Ferris State is one of those schools that can bludgeon you defensively, but you figured based on the sheer volume of talent for Mines, based on everything they've done this season, 47 points per game, scoring against really good teams, they throw it around a little bit, they score. It looks like they're playing with eight on the field against 14 Bulldogs right now, and maybe now you just take a knee and get into the half. Yeah. Last time Colorado School of Mines was shut out, September 25th, a year ago. They only gave up 13 in the first half, though. They've given up 27 here. And John Matoka, the Harlan Hill Award winner, as announced last night, has gone two for nine. He's thrown for 14 yards. So his receivers have 14 yards worth of completions. And after that pick six, Ferris State's defense now has 31 yards against Matoka. Yeah, Jordan Jones playing right over the center. Makes that play there and a tackle for loss. And we came in expecting to talk a whole lot about Caleb Murphy, and we have at times, but it's really the other three down defensive linemen for this Bulldog front that have dominated the first half. Dominate is the word. 
Domination on one That's end. The end of the first half. A demoralized team on the other. Colorado Stool of Mines has been blasted. And the ore diggers are going to have to crawl their way out of the greatest hole they've ever seen. John Matoka with two first half completions. Ferris State up big as we go to Morgan. Coach, how has your defense completely neutralized quarterback John Matoka? Well, we've gotten to him a few times, obviously. Um, you know, our run defense is really good and, and continue to pressure him. Uh, it's very challenging for him. Obviously, that last score is uh, a nice one uh, to have. And like last year, you know, we were ahead uh, at halftime, and I said just win a second half, or we're national champs, so we got to win the second half. What's it going to take to win that second half, Coach? Be who we are. Um, not get too excited about the scoreboard. Play it like it's zero to zero. Keep on uh, being gritty like we always have been this whole year. And uh, so gritty for one more half of football. Thanks so much, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Tony Anise's team has 272 yards of offense. Colorado School of Mines has 21. An absolute bludgeoning for 30 minutes of the D2 title game. It is all Ferris State. Halftime here at McKinney, Texas. 27-0 is the score, and frankly, it doesn't even feel that close. All Ferris State, 30 minutes away from a second straight national championship. Kevin Brown, Hudson Mason with you, with Ferris State. It's so often about Tony Anise and his offense. Ryan Hodges, the defensive coordinator, said yesterday, all we ever hear is offense, offense, offense. We've had to step up this year, and step up they have. Yeah, they have. I mean, they've been completely suffocating to the front, uh, uh, the offensive line of Mines, and, and Matoka has had no time to throw the football. But it's been sacks, it's been pass breakups, it's been TFLs. I mean, it, it, they have really not allowed John Matoka to get settled in from the very first snap. This could have been a pit, pick six, pass breakups, sacks, hard hits here on a third, third down and long rush for John Matoka. Uh, it, it is just an as soon as Ferris State smelt blood in the water with five-man pressures. Boy, did they attack, and they attacked harder and harder throughout the second half, and it paid off. And then right before the half, this pick six for a touchdown from McLeod broke the game wide open. That was a 31-yard pick six. So that interception return by Sidney Cloud went for 10 more yards than every Colorado School of Mines play combined. One yard per play, 1.0 for a team that's averaging 47 points per game, seven yards per play, highest scoring offense in the nation. It's been absolutely smothered by Ferris State. Ryan Hodges, their defensive coordinator, Tony Anise, the nephew of the head coach, Tony, the co-DC, have owned this game. Mines will start with the ball and we'll check in with Morgan. Coach Moore told me coming out of the locker room that really with this team, it's a relentless group, and that's still been the message for quarterback John Matoka, visibly frustrated, he said, inside that locker room, but that's when his quarterback is at his best, back against the ball. This team has been here before. They have that underdog mentality, and they're looking here to bring that in that second half, guys. They're going to have to bring it in spades for sure, Morgan. 131st season of football, first national title game appearance this was a very very confident group we spoke to brandon moore yesterday 21 yards of offense in the first half though and this is a good start mike zeman who got thrown down up high it's only the third first down of the game 15 yards it is tied for the longest play for mines yeah no he's limping off the field but this is one cut big run and Left side of that offensive line, able to collapse down, get the edge, and nice run there on first down. Quick hitter, Matoka on the slant. That is caught by Johnston. Just the third completion for John Matoka, a gain of five yards. This is the second first down. I mean, you say that, it's it's almost like you don't even believe believe it. A second first down for this offense uh, is the first adversity that they faced going back to the second week of the season in which they lost. But I thought at times early in the first half, Kevin, they got away from just trying to call the next best play. It's a quick hitter to Tristan Smith. 
And a couple of first downs now on this drive for Colorado School of Mines. That's good for six. And, and what I mean by that is they pick up another first down is when you're down 13, 20, 27, and it keeps getting larger, the propensity as a play caller is to just try to make all that up in one play. You can't do that. It's impossible, right? And I thought at times they tried. They were calling plays, calling shots. and Instead, they should have just tried to focus on getting a first down. Call the next best pass play. If it was a run for eight yards, run the same play. Fake it to Chris Hugh, Matoka, pressured, lost the ball, got it back, but he goes down. The fourth sack of the game for Ferris State. Nick Thomas, the sophomore, with his first sack of the season. Yeah, now the fourth different guy that's gotten involved for this Bulldog defense and, and bringing down Matoka. And this is the problem. It takes time. You got to have time to throw the ball down the field. And right now, this offensive line just isn't able to hold up when Ferris State is bringing five-man pressures. That basically means that each guy, each Bulldog along that front line is getting a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and they're capitalizing and cashing in on it. No sacks for the single-season sack leader, Caleb Murphy, and yet Ferris State has four. Murphy almost got to Matoka here. Ball was underthrown. A flag is out. Did Max McLeod catch it in the first place? He did. An amazing adjustment by McLeod on the underthrown ball. But will the pass interference be against McLeod? Ferris State thinks this is going to be offensive. You know what I enjoy? I, I enjoy the dramatic pause a referee does in between pass interference and offense. <laughs> it's just such an yeah. uncommon occurrence. Dwight Niebling sold it a little bit, and here's the call against McLeod. McLeod trying to get it out under duress, and what an amazing effort by McLeod to bring it in. Hard to tell where the offensive pass interference was from that angle, but Again, another couple positive plays negated by a penalty, and, and it's been hard, and it is hard to, to find a play in your playbook that can over, overcome second and 34. Would have been a 23-yard gain. Instead, it's a loss of 15. The second and 34 plays, another slant, and these slants for Mines have been completely undercut by Ferris State. Johnston with a very short gain there, only six yards. You now you're looking at the third and 28, and probably living in the world of throwing a screen and trying to play field possession. I mean, there's just, as a play caller, not a lot of plays on your third and 28 sheet that are, that are going to get it. Is there anything on your third and 28 sheet? A prayer. A P.I., honestly, a P.I., throwing it up, maybe getting a P.I. call. Be a rollout instead. Matoka hurtling over defender, got rid of it very late. Mines will get something back on the play to Mason Carp. Good for 10. It's still fourth and a mile. The sack and the penalty destroy what looked like a pretty promising drive to start for Mines. That's been the type of day, even in the first half. They get a positive play, and then it's a sack. They get a nice pickup on first down, and then it's a negative play. It's been this one step forward, two steps back approach, and they haven't been able to get into really any rhythm, settle in, and find any type of, of sustained success offensively on any drive. Another punt for Click, another very, very low punt for Click. Did that hit a oh. Ferris State player? It did! It was such a low punt, it worked to Mines' advantage. You said Click needed to get some more hang time on these punts. That one may have been so poor it was brilliant. Well, I think it was a squib kick on purpose. And, and I think the long snapper, Josh w Wojohowicz, pushed a Ferris State player. He saw that the ball was right near him and purposely pushed a Bulldog player into the ball, which is brilliant. Now, the officials are discussing here whether or not this touched a Ferris State player. And we'll get the call from Dwight Neal. Early on the field, the ball was touched by Ferris, then recovered by Colorado School of Mines. First down. Right there, it looks like it hits a Ferris State player in the back. And it's recovered by Ben Fuchs, the reserve linebacker. After, did it hit? And sorry, that's, that's Jaden Healy. 
that pushes the number 44 for, for Bynes, that pushes the Ferris State player into the football. That, that is a heads up, brilliant play. It looked like it got Jovan Bayless, the linebacker, in the right leg or the right side. Dwight Niebling and a couple of officials are going to come to the near side now. Talk to Tony and East about this. That is about the only thing that's gone right for Mines today. It's been and the best play for him. They really had no choice but to score on this drive, given the way Ferris State dominated that first half. And they punted the ball from about the 30. It's a 50-yard play. I asked you what was in the playbook for third and 26. You said a prayer. <laughs> I said a prayer. <laughs> How about for fourth and 18? A miracle of some sort. I think you could describe that as the <laughs> as a miracle prayer, a miracle play. The one percent. Both coaches given an explanation, and now Dwight Niebling, the referee, will signal us ready to play. Just the way you drew it up. First and 10 from the Ferris State 28. Siemens back of the game, a fake to him over the top. Latoka's pass too tall for Max McLeod. Brandon Moore is beelining down the sideline, hoping for a pass interference call against Vincent Cooley, and he won't get it. A little, little RPO, looks like a run. Rips the ball out of his running back's belly, and it looks like he's. See those eyes are on the front side of the play and instead of the back side. I don't know if Matoka was intending to throw the ball to the front side in the last second, tried to throw that slant back side. Zeman slipped, no gain. And third and ten coming up. And it's been first down that has really plagued this mind's offense. They, they, after a big play, have not been able to find any rhythm and the inefficiency, the incompletion on first down, the no gain on second down, puts them again in a predictable passing situation. And these front four Bulldogs have been able to tee off when they know it's a pass, get after the quarterback. 0 for 7 against the nation's second best third down defense. Matoka, quick hitter incomplete. A wide open Mason Carp. Couldn't catch it. Uh, it's just a great play design, too. They bring pretty much everybody in the middle of the field, four down linemen, two linebackers. The middle of the field is vacated, and that's where Carp tries to attack. But Toka sees that, he identifies it, and it's just that that play has been... It's happened so many times today, just inches away from a bigger play. One, one guy misses there, and it could have been a house call. Mines will go for it, fourth and ten. Matoka, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Jordan Jones with his second sack. And Ferris State's defense bails out Ferris State special teams. The fifth sack of the game for Ferris Media State. Timeout. Perhaps the nation's most ferocious front four. Certainly Locked have been today. Miley Mitchell, 9 for 11 in the first half for Ferris State. What a journey it's been for Miley Mitchell. Morgan, you have more in his story. State, he... When he was a redshirt freshman there at Kent State, he tore his ACL and said that being sidelined really gave him the perspective that any play on the field can be his last. And it's led to just this work ethic that you see here in this championship game, the resilience, every practice rep, every game rep, he brings 100%. And mentally, he said that he really doesn't feel the need to prove anything to anyone but himself. Guys. Five yard penalty, second down. Morgan, for some context, Miley Mitchell is 26 years old. That is older than Sam Darnold, who is in his fifth year in the NFL. Morgan told you that. Enrolled at Kent State in 2015. Had the torn ACL. Had a season-ending wrist injury against Alabama. Missed 2017 with an injury. 
Rose has it here after the false start. Big gain for Brady Rose on second and 12, right near the first down line to pick up. Growing the injuries plus the extra year of eligibility that everybody gets because of COVID. You're seeing more and more older players. I mean, you, you know, we'll see an old player, old quarterback for Georgia in the, in the college football playoff game. Stetson Bennett's played seven years of college football. So you're seeing a little bit and more and more of it for unique circumstances across college football. And coaches love it. Look, if you want one guy to be really old and, and veteranist, it's your quarterback. And he's got a year of eligibility left to boot. Could be 27 in the oh. national title game next year. Mitchell's in there for a third down in this play. Never happens. Timeout, Ferris State. First charge, 30 seconds in length. Okie doke, first time out, Ferris State. Let's go back to Morgan. Mitchell actually, guys, took a two-year hiatus from football to continue this conversation. He was working in warehouses, working in a factory, and had this aha moment. He still had a love for the game, but he was talking with some of those coworkers. He said, much older than himself, and said, you're too young, man. You need to get back out there. Give it another try. And that was really the encouragement that he had from some of these guys. And a big reason why he decided to come to this Ferris State program, wasn't quite ready to hang it up yet, and told me when I was there at practice on Thursday, he He's just so glad that he is back here with this team. It's a team that really fits, you know, his style of play and uh, really able to be a mature leader for this group. It's an amazing story, Morgan. Two years of working in warehouses and two years later, he's in the national title game. And the connection here was Brian Rock, who's the offensive coordinator at Kent State, who recruited my league, then left before my league ever played it down for Kent State. He is now the assistant head coach and quarterbacks coach here at Ferris State. He and my league got in touch, and the rest for Ferris State has been history. Been a great year, incredible year. And talk about the big shoes he had to fill, replacing Jared Bernhardt last year on the national championship team. And here he is with a, with a large lead, two and a half quarters in, and a great spot to repeat as national champs. Go watch this play from the sideline. Golker driving the shoulders low. Jaron Williams made the stop. Line to gain was the 40. This ball is going to be a little bit short. So Mines gets the stop, and Ferris going to bring out the punt team. Those quarterback design runs have worked today really well in, in short yardage situations. We've seen a touchdown result in one of them. A, a couple times they went to it in, in third and short just like they did there. And credit the defensive line for Mines. Continuing to play with some effort and penetration and forcing a much needed punt. Better watch out for the direct snap, maybe the fake. Went back instead. We'll just boot it away. Another low punt, returnable for Pierce. Now to the 30-yard line. Lines gets the defensive stop, and they get some points. Medium timeout. Tough game right now, but a special weekend for Colorado School of Mines. Great fan support here at the National Championship game. And a special Thursday for 17 Mines players who graduated here at the semester break, but commencement this weekend, they're not able to make it. So the school held a special commencement ceremony for these Mines players on Thursday. Brandon Moore, the head coach, got to hold them out. He said he became an honorary doctor for a day. He said, I'm giving that honorary doctorate back very quickly. It is an amazing academic institution. U.S. News and World Report college rankings. It is the highest ranked school in Division II. John Matoka, computer science major, for the first down completion to Max McLeod. 52 players on the team, Hudson, are mechanical engineering majors, which I know is about as many as you had at Georgia in your time. <laughs> Brandon Moore said, look, football's like recess for these guys. It, it's a place to escape from an increasingly difficult classroom. Matoka will give it to Zeman here on second and four. Jamatoka is the Harlan Hill winner. He's the best player in Division II. One of his professors only found out this week that John was a football player. 
Could you imagine if any of your professors didn't know you were the starting quarterback at college? Sometimes I want I, didn't, I wanted my professors to not know I was a football <laughs> player, depending on how I played. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it just uh, the, the, the amount of academics and, and the sports that they have to balance. Thirty yards, Zeman gets stacked up. This Ferris State front continues to deliver. Jake Plamondon. Or Plamondon, beg your pardon, the defensive tackle was in there. There's nowhere to run. I mean, they're just sold out to stop in the run. And Officials timeout for an injured offensive play. That's Preston Rose, mine's tight end. I thought it was interesting. Yesterday we were meeting with, with Coach Moore, and he was talking about how half his team was taking finals right now. You know, here you are the night before playing and preparing for the biggest game of program history, and Half of your team is taking finals in, uh, in the team hotel. It just speaks to, you know, during a week like this, how much these student athletes are balancing that is just unrelated to, to sports and, and football. Said, I told my wife if I ever got a job in coaching, I would coach smart kids. Because he said I wasn't a super athletic player. I was a smart player. He's from Baldwin, New York, Old Bruins. Went to Oklahoma, was going to go to Georgia Tech, ended up, Switching and going to Oklahoma, won a national championship there. Had an NFL career, a few years with the 49ers and Chargers, and then bounced around a little bit as a coach until he joined the defensive staff here. He's taken over this year for the retired Greg Brandon, and he is coaching some of the smartest kids in the country. Yeah. Incredible story in, in himself. He's working at the sh local sheriff's department and Arizona really felt like he wasn't pursuing his passion and his purpose in life was coaching community college football in Arizona on the side and Fourth and two a little surprised that mines punted given that they're down 27 late in the third quarter But punt they do get it back it Ferris State will Throw out the records when the Mustangs and the Cougars get together it was Brady Rose I remember that game because there was one year you play uh, EA Sports, NCAA football. But there's one of the games, I think it was like 08 or 09 or something, where you would play the ending of classic games. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I could never beat that with BYU. It's impossible to score 21 points in 357 because <laughs> you can't recover onside kicks in NCAA football. But it happened in real life. That's incomplete. Mitchell for Underwood. Were you a good EA Sports uh, NCAA football uh, player? That was decent. That was decent. Better actual football player? I hope so. <laughs> is that coming back next year? I think it is. And it was always kind of cool to be able to get on that video game and see yourself. But then it was also deflating when you would see your speed at like 48. <laughs> <laughs> was, was that your speed in the game? U UGA quarterback number nine or whatever yeah. you were. You know, it's like you see these NFL players get so mad when the Madden ratings come out. You know, it's come on, I'm a little more athletic than that, aren't I? <laughs> Angry letter to the editor of the EA Sports offices. Mitchell scans the field and finds Rose. Another good decision by Miley Mitchell. Now 10 for 13 and a first down for Brady Rose. Boy, if I had a uh, an early MVP vote, it might go to Rhodes. Pretty much played every position, had an impact at every different position. Influenced the game in a passing trick play early on. Has caught a lot of big plays in that slot. He's, he's slippery, man. He's, he's shorter in stature and uh, hard to find when he gets lost in traffic. But at 5'8", 175, he's hard to bring down. Option play for Mitchell had Rose running to his left. Brady Rose now three carries for 21 yards, three catches for 43, and one for one with a 48-yard completion, doing it all at a listed 5'8", 175. One for one. That's the most important thing. Coach calls in for another pass play. He might need to coach him. I don't know, cramp in the right hand or, or something like that, trying to keep my efficiency at perfect. He's on the sideline for this second and four. It's a missed exchange there. That's happened a couple of times. There have been some issues receiving snaps for Mitchell. That one was a faulty exchange between he and Taylor. See it again here on the replay. Yeah, 
he's, he's trying to pull that out of the running back's belly, and he just loses it. It's the fourth fumble for Ferris. Only lost one. Taylor goes to the slot left on a third and eight. Three to snap it. Got it off in time. Mitchell still moving, still behind the line, and he'll just throw it away. Mines coverage allowed him no open windows. Mac Minahan had the pressure, and Ferris State will punt it back. Yeah, a really nice job in the secondary. It's a credit to really plastering, what you call plastering, when the quarterback gets flushed out of the pocket. You know, the second part of the play, making sure your DBs are, are not giving up, still alert. Earlier in the game, we saw that same type of play where Mitchell got flushed out. He found Rose for a big gain, and they ended up turning it into a touchdown. Nice job there by Mines defense in the secondary. Fourth Ferris State punt. Quentin Beck. Here's makes a fair catch. Punt of 37 for Beck, the Ferris State punter. Brandon Moore's offense will try to just get on the board. You mentioned off the top, this team has scored 80 twice in a game this year. It's not 18, that's 8-0, 80. 47 points per game. They ran for 39 touchdowns in the first 15, threw for 51. They haven't even sniffed the end zone today. 60 total yards. Tristan Smith from Batoka. Colorado School of Mines, not just the highest scoring offense in the country, they're scoring by a lot, by four points on the next closest team. Their season low was against Grand Valley State, which was seen as maybe the national championship favorite in the postseason. They still got 22 against GVSU. The rollout for Matoka. There's a first down to Tristan Smith. Good hit delivered at the end by Alexander. And Smith with the fifth first down for the Ordiggers. Yeah, I like how they decide to move the pocket here. Move the spot for the quarterback. Call a quarterback design rollout, and it decreases the chances of the ball getting batted and your quarterback getting sacked. And a quick drop, quick delivery, and Johnston trying to make a one-handed catch over the top of Alexander. Brandon Moore told us yesterday, he thought, in all honesty, their wide receivers would be better than these defensive backs, and Ferris State's front has been great, but the Ferris State secondary, with all of its length, has been just as good. They haven't been threatened deep at all at any point today, and when your DBs are not threatened and they're not beat deep. I mean, there's really no reason to play anything other than just tight bump and run man coverage. And there's really been zero separation for these Mines receivers. Matoka faked the run, got it to Smith, and he's wrapped up quickly. That's McLeod with a pick six at the end of the first half. Or maybe a yard. It's offensive coordinator Pete Sturbeck is in a tough spot because the drop back game is just too tough on your offensive line. Uh, but when you're not able to create any vertical shots, you're not able to get these DBs to back up and, and give some easy completions underneath. It's a it's a it's a difficult balance to call plays when a defense is dominating up front like this. Atoka loads up. That's incomplete for Johnston with a flag thrown on the coverage by McLeod. Pass interference, number one, defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. To the absolute delight of the Ferris State faithful. Somebody a little surprised by the play call on that Ferris State sideline, but I think that's a good call. I mean, I think it's the right call. You can see that offhand of McLeod 
That left hand, to his right hand here. Now, yeah, and the left hand wrapped up, wrapped around the body. Atoka, here's a deep shot, testing McLeod again, and Johnston reeled it in. Finally, at the 239 mark of the third quarter, Mines goes deep effectively. 36 yards for the longest play on offense. And that's what's been missing, and that's the way you get teams out of playing that tight man coverage. Mines made a substitution. The umpire's going to hold this so Ferris State can make a switch up front, so no chance to go full tempo. From the Bulldogs, 22. Matoka, incomplete. Off the hands of McLeod. That's Max McLeod with Sidney McLeod in there as well. And another drop for Bynes. This is the catch to play before that first from Johnston. Nice ball, putting it right in the, in the basket. Johnston able to bring it down. Toka being chased from behind by Hall. And he got rid of it to Zeman just in time before the sack was made. So a little improvisation there to pick up six. Yeah, I mean, just a, a gritty, tough throw off balance. I, I don't know how Matoka was able to make this throw. Kind of, you know, Patrick Mahomes asked when you got guys draping all over you and you got to change your arm angle. And it's a big time completion to get this to third and four. 0 for 9 on third down today for Colorado School of Mines. Matoka throws it quickly. Smith got a blocker. Spins down to the 10. And there it is. The first third down conversion of the game comes after 43 minutes and 33 seconds for Colorado School of Mines. Yeah, just a, a predetermined kind of RPO where you're reading the numbers in the box. And if that deep safety out there to the bunch of the receiver side is playing 10 yards off or more, your thought as a quarterback is he's the one who's free and has got to make the tackle. And if he's playing that soft, then rip it out there, and it's enough for the first down. Four diggers in the red zone, first and goal. Matoka out of the flats to Zeman. It's a touchdown. Colorado School of Mines has its first points in a championship game. Matoka's 51st touchdown of the year, and there is some late life for the Ore Diggers. Extra point is good from Click. 85 yards in nine plays. More yards on that drive than the rest of the game combined for Mines. Yeah, just Zeman out of the backfield, completely uncovered. A boss in the secondary communicating who's got the running back, who's got the receiver for Ferris State. They've been good and clean in their communication all game, but you're right, there was no life for this Mines offense up until Josh Johnston made that long, tough, contested one-on-one -on -one catch. And then after that, a couple plays made, Zeman finishes it off for a touchdown. It's amazing in football how one first down, one big play can create a little bit of, of a spark, a little bit of momentum, and it leads to a touchdown. I'm wondering if it was a little bit too late, though, if your minds with a minute left in the third quarter. It's an offense that, it, when they've gotten inside of the red zone this year, they've, they've been elite. Those are two of the best signs of the year right there. Engineers, scientists, PhDs, nerds, Uranus, nerds rule, dogs drool. <laughs> they are nerds and they are proud. This primarily engineering school, they, Athletic department motto is Colorado School of Mines, where nerds win. They've dubbed the fan base the Nerd Herd. The Nerd Herd? Mm -hmm. 
quite a nerd herd that's made its way down to McKinney. Well, it's a 12 hour drive or so, but there are more Mines alums in Texas than any other state besides Colorado. And they have showed up in full force in this history making day for this university. A lot of these players, the state of Texas. John Matoka being one of them, I was talking with him in the pregame. He's grew up about three, three and a half hours from here. He's got a lot of family that made the track over to see him play. And you know, obviously, a rich recruiting, fertile recruiting ground in the state of Texas. He's dipped into this state a lot to get some players. One of the players, Max Fetchy, a reserve linebacker. It's from McKinney, practiced at his alma mater, McKinney North on Thursday. One of 38 Mines players from Texas. They've got a little life. Not much time left. Can they get a stop against Ferris State here at the end of the third? Malik Mitchell will give it to Rose. Chase backwards. Rose slips free. And got a couple of yards out of it. Jack Peterson helping to blow the play up. Officials timeout for an injured defensive player. It's a Mines player right where the play was made along the sideline. Much of the great support for Mines. A lot of fans made the 12 hour bus trip, and that's in part thanks to the Broncos. Greg Penner, Carrie Penner, and Rob Walton, part of the Broncos ownership group, donated $100,000 to the school, helping to offset costs for students to cheer them on here at the Division II championship game. We got to speak with David Hansbury, the athletic director, yesterday. He has a great relationship with the Broncos, he got in touch said is there anything you guys could do to, to help us out they said you know what are you thinking they said maybe a hundred thousand dollars next day got a call we're sending you a hundred thousand dollars so you probably should have asked for more but <laughs> there's the life lesson <laughs> always ask for more that, that's money to bust down the cheerleaders the dance team the band fan buses also for per diem for the cheerleaders the dance and the band team so a pretty special thing for the broncos to do they also advertise the game on the video board during their game last week against Kansas City. Second down throw by Mitchell underneath. And a slippery play by Libertas broke a couple of tackles. He'll be two yards shy of a first down on what might be the last play of the quarter. Yeah, it's going to set up an interesting kind of third and short here. See if Ferris State decides to run out the clock and wait till the fourth quarter or, or snap it here. But a big spot here. Difference in being able to force a three and out and not. Third and two, they'll snap it before the end of the quarter, and it's floated to Rose. Another big play for Brady Rose, and a first down to kill the third quarter clock. Well, just when you need a big play, it's it's always Rose, isn't it? Whether they need to throw it or run it or pass it, tip ball on third and two. Mine's thinking about getting off the field and giving the ball back, and tip ball leads to a big first down. Jaden Healy tipped it, Brady Rose caught it. And Ferris State is 15 minutes from a championship. Ferris State is 15 minutes away from the second national championship in school history. Hoping to join a list they've recently been on. 2015 at 16, Northwest Missouri State in the snow hosted the trophy, hoisted the trophy in Kansas City. Texas A&M Commerce's Lions led by Luis Perez the year after that. Ferris State fell short to Valdosta State in 2018. West Florida in its fourth year as a program won the title in 2019. And the Bulldogs got their long-awaited revenge on Valdosta a season ago. 58-17 was the final then. 27-7 is the score here for Mylake Mitchell's Bulldogs. First play of the quarter is a run play. Marcus Taylor bursting into Mines territory. Mason Pierce finally ran him out after a run of 25 yards for Taylor. Well, Hayden Gregg, inside linebacker, has a, a free shot on Taylor. 
You see him split right through, right there, and miss the wide open tackle. And Taylor's just too good and too electric, where if you give him a second shot, an open field will make you pay. Only nine carries, but 79 yards for Taylor, the converted wide receiver. And throw it away from him this time. Jefferson breaks a tackle in the backfield. And eventually goes down. More on Marcus Taylor's story. Here's Morgan. Taylor had been begging Coach Anise to try him at running back, and they made that switch during week seven, and really he's become a relentless student of the position, guys. He said there was a big learning curve to understanding the technicalities of his offensive line, but he said that aspect of making people miss, that's in you. They lost their top three running backs, Morgan, from a season ago, and Marcus, who really hadn't played it in four previous years, ended up being the answer. Tony Anise said, we never really had him on a downhill run play. We didn't know how it would go. It's gone beautifully. Here's Rose on the sweep. Another big play. Brady Rose down to the 21. He has owned this game. Maybe the smallest player on the field has had perhaps the biggest impact. Uh, he definitely has. I mean, it, it just used him in so many different ways. They're creative with him. This time it's in the speed sweep game. And, See number nine right there, Mahinahan jet up field, and Rose just takes it underneath, and, he, and he's so kind of slippery in space. It's hard to bring down. It's hard to find, but when, when you, even when you see him, he's just so he's got such great agility. Mitchell back to Taylor. Couple of sharp cuts outside, running for Taylor inside the five. Lowering the shoulder down to the three. 19 more hard-earned yards for Marcus Taylor to bring a first and goal into the picture. One play, it's Rose, and the next play, it's Taylor. The one-two punch of those guys in the backfield at, at the running back position is, is a lot to handle, and it's been too much for, for minds at times today. It's really a, a great combination because they're, they're two different types of runners and styles, and, Marcus Taylor, the senior from Orlando, Florida, has had a great day, but even a great year. Now it's Golker, the drive closer. Down to the one. It's almost like a baseball team. You know, Mitchell's your starting pitcher who goes seven, eight innings, which doesn't happen much these days. And then Golker just comes in for the last three outs. Yeah. Can you imagine if you were a Golker at the beginning of the year, if somebody had told you when you weren't even expected to play that, hey, man, you'll, not only are you going to play, but, like, you're going to break records and you're going to be a main contributor on this championship team. You don't think the over-under was right around 29 for touchdowns for him? That's what he's got right now. He'll look for number 30. Golker up the gut. Golker finds Paydirt. The closer delivers again. Mitchell and Rose and Taylor get him down to the three. Golker does the rest. And Ferris State answers the mind score to begin the fourth. Thirty rushing touchdowns for the freshman from Zeeland, Michigan. And a 34-7 lead in the national championship game for Ferris State. The conference freshman of the year, Carson Golker, finishes it off. Ferris State back on top by 27. Carson Golker has been able to save Ferris time and again this season. Injuries to Mike Mitchell, injuries to Evan Cummins. Quarterback who wasn't on the radar to begin the season now leads the nation in rushing touchdowns. 30 of them to pace Division II and to pace all levels of college football. These script plays where they have four quarterbacks share 100% of the reps in practice. That's just what Tony Anise does. His philosophy, as we mentioned earlier, is in basketball, how many point guards play the whole game? He has different quarterbacks for different spots. And Golker is their finisher. Low kick returned by Mines from the 20. 
Four diggers will start at the 30-yard line. Connor Mickelson, one of the young men, was there. Yeah, it, it, you know, 30 touchdowns for a running back on a year is, is absurd numbers. And uh, he's a backup quarterback. And I know he plays more than your traditional backup, but he is you know, number two uh, on the depth chart, but, but behind Mitchell. So it, it's just crazy at how Tony Anise has been able to take multiple guys at this position, get them to buy into their role and buy into the team, and it works. It's become really hard to defend, but Carson Golker, the redshirt freshman, has had an incredible year with his legs. John Matoka back out there for Mines. Good tackle made there on the cloud by Vincent Cooley. The relationship between the quarterbacks is special, too, because Tony and East told us Mike Mitchell could be mad. He doesn't have to handle this well. He never gets to finish off many of these drives. But it, it is extraordinary how great he is to Carson Gulker. He says he treats him like he's the man. Little shovel pass here to Zeman. And a first down for Mike Zeman. Gain of 10 yards on the little pitch from Matoka. A little speed option shovel pass. Defensive end and a kind of jet up field. And nice little wrinkle that we haven't seen today to help him. It's going to go down as a pass, but a kind of a glorified run. Matoka's completed 14 passes. In the second half, just two in the first. Under pressure all day as he lets this one rip in the direction of Sidney McLeod. Knocked it away from Zach Hoffman. Side of the one PI penalty on the last drive. McLeod has been just spectacular all day. The pick six earlier right before the half. He's played tight man coverage. He's considered, considered the leader of this team, but you know, from a next level personnel standpoint, you see the athleticism there. He's really got all three traits. You know, in, in baseball, they use the term he's a three tool player. Like, that's exactly what Sidney McLeod is. He's got speed, he's got length, and he's got athleticism, which is the three tool combination that they're always looking for at the next level in a DB. Matoka second down and a completion. Johnston reaching for the ball across the 40. It's another big pass play for Mines down to the 38, gain of 19. Johnson just going to line up out wide and work in on a dig round, find the soft zone. It's been a it's been a slow and tough day for these receivers. Four consecutive playoff games where one of these Mines receivers had a three touchdown performance. Obviously, that's going to come to an end today, but to take away from a spectacular postseason. Matoka trying to find something down the field. Nearly did to Cart, but it's incomplete. Clark kind of working over from the other side of the field. Originally, I, th I thought he had the catch here. He just kind of comes out at the last second. These are areas today where Ferris State has, has brought five guys and forced a one-on-one -on -one pass rushing matchup. They're only going to bring three this time. And they're still going to get to him. Matoka sacked. Ian Hall. He joins Jones. And the multi-sack club today. And that's six for Ferris State. Ian Hall is listed a, as a, a backup behind Oladipo. And you know you got it good when your number twos are coming in and having multiple sack performances. And Ian Hall didn't see the field as much because he's behind Oladipo, Larray Oladipo, who's a stud as well and a transfer from Illinois. But it, it speaks to the depth. The amount of absolute dogs that they have on that defensive line. Third and 19, Matoka batted away at the line. It was Hall again. Junior from Wyoming, Michigan. Two sacks, a pass breakup, and Matoka slams a helmet to the turf. If it's not sacks, it's been tackles for loss, it's been tip passes. I mean, the, between 
Matoka getting sacked in the pass breakups. It, the, the, Matoka's only listed at 5'11", and so I think at times today the game plan has been evident to kind of keep him inside the pocket, make him throw from the pocket, and if you're a defensive lineman, you can't get to him, get your hand up, and that's been just as good of a sack. Colorado School of Mines has seven points. Media timeout. Ferris State has six sacks. It's been that kind of a feeling for the Harlan Hill winner. The Lone Star Bulldogs. There are a few Ferris State alums down here in Texas. School that's up in Big Rapids, Michigan. Founded in 1884, 13,500 students. And not to be confused with Grand Rapids. Not to be confused with Grand Rapids. Don't make that mistake. Big Rapids and Grand Rapids, different types of rapids. I could see how you, if you're at, you know, not from Michigan, how you could get those two confused. That's right. Where on the hand is Grand Rapids versus where on the hand is Big Rapids. You're, Do you know? You're visualizing the hand to me right now like we can see it on camera, <laughs> but it's only me. You, you Ball star, right, number you wrote 70. On your hand, by the way, Offense. looks like a faded pen mark. Penalties it's half the distance to the goal. Directions. First down. <laughs> it's Adam Sealer with the ninth penalty against Ferris State. Uh, it's up there. Big Rapids is, is up there on the mitten in Michigan. It's a 17-hour drive to McKinney, Texas. But there were four fan buses that made the trip down. They did it, I hope, in two days. <laughs> First and 13. And it's Taylor, who's very close to a 100-yard game. He's at 98, and he's going to stay at 98 right here. You know, we were talking about this earlier in the game during a break. I know folks love to hear what we're talking about during breaks. <laughs> they kind of remind us of North Dakota State. They're up there in the same part of the country. Big offensive line, big front defensive line, ground and pound game with a couple of well-placed quick passes. And they are, if they win this, basically the North Dakota State of Division II. This would be a second straight national championship. They've won 11 games in eight years in a row. Not counting the COVID year, which only Alabama, Ohio State, and North Dakota State have done across all football divisions. I, I don't want to say anybody can win one national title because that's not entirely true, but teams get hot. And they can get hot in the postseason. But when you're a team that can win back to back and, and do it after losing your starting quarterback and, and do it after losing a lot of seniors and players, and, and I think it just speaks to the culture, it speaks to the dynasty that's been built. Uh, it, it just is, it's remarkable at any level, high school, college, pro, when you get into doing things and winning championships in back-to-back -back years, it, it's hard to put into words how great of an accomplishment that is. Scramble for Mitchell, who slides to a stop. A few yards shy of a first down. We'll get down safely, and Ferris State will punt. Tony Anise showed us his phone when we sat down yesterday. The first thing he said was, I was thinking on my drive the other day about all the players that were here last year, and he made a list in a notes document of the players that played in the title game that aren't here this year. Nine who played on defense last year. Fifteen players who appeared on offense who are not here. So 24 players on offense or defense that are not on this team. They exhausted their eligibility. And still, Ferris State is about as dominant as it was in this game a year ago. The national title trophy is so close they get tasted. They'll be back on defense with a comfortable lead in the D2 title game. Ten tackles for loss today. Ferris State six sacks against the nation's best offense. It's been suffocating and, it, and it's been overwhelming for Mines' offensive line. They knew they had a challenge coming in to the week, just dealing with Murphy, the best defensive player in the country. But I don't think they understood just the amount of dogs, pun intended, that were along this defensive line outside of Caleb Murphy. Jordan Jones, Larray Oladipo, Ian Hall. I mean, they, they are too deep along this defensive line, and it's been fun and impressive to watch. Toka gets it 
to McLeod after dropping the play in the exchange. Let's go down to Morgan. I talked to Murphy about replicating the success, defending national champs, but he made it very clear it's not about replicating success. It's about showing something different. Ferris State, a team usually known for its offense, that 2021 team certainly was. He said that we want to show this is a defensively hard-nosed team. They take a lot of pride in that. And guys, with six sacks, just the explosive and suffocating defense we've seen here today certainly has shown. It's a quick hitter to Tristan Smith for a first down. And Smith look at a face mask tasked onto it. And at Morgan's point, they've taken a lot of pride in the defense bailing out the offense at points this year. They're going to give up big yards here. 18 plus another First 15 foul, attack on. Face mask, number zero, defense. Penalties half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. First down. Carvis Alexander gets in there on the on the 15-yard penalty on the face mask, but you know, I would have told you at the beginning of the game, Kevin, that it's fair state would have all these team sacks, and Caleb Murphy would not have any. I mean, that, that would have six team sacks, and Caleb Murphy wouldn't have one. I mean, that 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 might be the most shocking thing to me today. It speaks to the depth of, of the front seven. Jones has two. Hall has two as well. On the 14, Matoka. Up for grabs and down for Johnston for a Colorado School of Mines touchdown. John sixth year senior Josh Johnson with a score. Sorry, Kevin. Yeah, talk about his ball skills. I mean, we saw it earlier in the third quarter. He's 6'2, buck 95. I mean, he's, he's got a big, tall radius, and he's the type of receiver that has made big time contested catches. All season long, he talked to his coach, Brandon Moore, this week. I mean, he was raving about his ball skills and, and being able to really put it in places, even when he's covered, that he can catch it. And you see it again there. Making his 43rd consecutive start. His 13th touchdown of the season. A couple of those passing scores for Matoka here in this second half. What a way to go out for Josh Johnson if it is indeed the end. A touchdown in his final college game for Mines. Colorado School of Mines band may have the coolest accessory of any band in the land. The mining helmets. Even the conductor gets in on the mining helmet action. School that was founded in 1874 as a school for miners, Golden, Colorado. The ore diggers, obviously a big mining area in the 1800s. It's become a school for engineers, largely. John Matoka, computer science major, quarterback of this team. Pretty special group of kids that are going to have some wonderful careers outside of football. Brandon Moore said recruiting's not hard. The return on investment here, you're going to be a millionaire by age 40. You can play your cards right. It's a pretty good recruiting pitch, isn't it? I'd listen. This onside kick straight out of bounds. So down three scores, got to take some risks, and Cliff boots it out of bounds. Brandon Moore said the recruiting pitch hits a little harder with the parents usually than the kids. That's how you hook them. Yeah. 7,172 students. Play, both by the kicking team. Free kick out of bounds, number zero. That penalty's declined. Illegal kick, block, here. number nine. That's enforced five yards from the dead ball spot. First down, Ferris State. An illegal block on a kick straight out of bounds. Huh. Science and engineering, it's a STEM school. Science, technology, engineering, and math. <laughs> Brandon Moore said it's funny coaching these kinds of kids because if something in practice is too easy, they'll ask you why. He pulled them out of pads a few weeks ago. Said, I couldn't wait to get out of pads as a player. And I had 15 kids in my office asking me, Coach, why you do that? That's definitely counterculture, isn't it? <laughs> it's as counter as it gets. It's basically this deep into the year. Offside, number 44, defense. Entered the neutral zone, causing an immediate reaction. Five-yard penalty, first down. Please reset the game clock to six minutes, 24 seconds, 6 to 4 We'll add one glorious second you, to the clock here. <laughs> Why 
Bruins can be back next year in the mix. They'll lose a number of players, but John Matoka is eligible to return, along with many other key players. There's a big loss here. Zach Hester got C.J. Jefferson down, and then a little extra after the play. Tony Anise is just almost out there at the numbers, pleading for a late hit. Brian McCormick was in there. Officials timeout for an injured offensive player. And Brian McCormick thought maybe the ball was still loose, so understand why. Oh, that's Adrian Moreno, beg your pardon. Moreno, 15 for Mines. Jefferson was ruled down. It's a loss of five. Under six to go in the title game. Mitchell into the belly of Taylor. And Taylor stuck by Jaden Williams after a couple of yards. Ferris State led this game 27 0 at the half. He's had some trouble moving the ball in the second, but it had more than enough of a cushion, it appears, to bring home a national title for the second straight year. Yeah, two guys, I think, will have a case for, for MVP. I think Mitchell and, and Brady Rose have had huge impacts today. Well, the last five minutes could determine that. Mitchell to throw it off his back foot and complete. Down to the five-yard line to Jefferson, who continues a pretty darn big game of his own accord. That's good for 29. Yeah, that's good of a throw, as you'll see from my league Mitchell. Somebody in his face, can't step into a throw, and it's not like C.J. Jefferson was just running wide open. I mean, look at the coverage right there from Rayburn in the secondary. First and goal, Mitchell will stay in there. Maybe a yard away from Golker territory. And this play is not going to be ready before the expiration of the play time clock. Timeout, Ferris State, second charge. Second timeout for Ferris State. January 8th, 2 Eastern on ABC. It's the NCAA FCS championship game. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships, and they should be just underway on ESPN2 between South Dakota State and Montana State. Winner of that game gets North Dakota State. Big comeback win for the Bison yesterday. Takedown incarnate word after falling behind 16-0 in the Fargo game. Yeah, what, what a game that was. Sitting in the hotel room last night watching that. And boy, the way incarnate word just jumped out on North Dakota State to a big lead. And the way North Dakota State was able to kind of just slowly, methodically play themselves back into it, ultimately end up pulling one out. CJ Kenny, the head coach there in his was it first year or uh or now taking the Texas State job. He's had a lot of success. Under, learned under Josh Heupel at UCF. Fun offense to watch him. Had a lot of success at the FCS level. Well, unfortunately for my league, after the timeout, uh, we're now back in the Golker zone. Yeah, it's the old Golker zone, man. <laughs> my league Mitchell's got to be thinking, I have to score from like the 15-yard yeah. line or farther back or else I got no chance to punch it in. Look at Golker might win the MVP. <laughs> Golker's got eight carries, 12 yards, two touchdowns. I'm telling you, the dark horse MVP action. From the six, Golker just driving forward. Look at the oh, push. push. A late push by Golker. He barrels in for touchdown number three. You know who else could be the MVP of this game? This entire Ferris State offensive line. Man, I mean, there's Bush push and there's what this was. <laughs> I mean, just like uh, the way the pile moved, looked like it was dead, looked like it was going nowhere. 
It's like down by right there. Look at this. Mignor 52, 98, 97. We got 98 doing in the game on offense. Just moving the pile. A good extra three yards. I mean, there's some girth behind that pile moving. Jake Plamondon was in there, defensive tackle. Who was the other 90 you saw? What other number 98, 97. It's Travis Miracle. I apologize to the third one in there. I forgot who it was. So nine carries, three touchdowns for Gulker. There's number 98, 97. Lamonda, the redshirt freshman, Miracle, the sophomore. And three touchdown plunges for Carson Gulker today. After this game, a trophy presentation will be following the game on ESPN Plus. That trophy, barring a different kind of miracle, will be returning to Big Rapids, Michigan, with Ferris State ready to go back to back in Division Two. Last team to do that, Northwest Missouri State, 2015 and 16. With a win, Ferris State would move to 110 in the last eight seasons. They would be 55 and three in their last 58 games. That's what we call a dynasty. I think you got to win two to be a dynasty, two titles. So this, I think, would make them a dynasty, a mini dynasty, whatever you want to call it. You win the second title, you put yourself in rarefied air, especially without. 15 players that played on offense in the championship game a year ago. You know, and they've been in this game a lot the past four years, but you get to this game three or four times and, you know, only come away with one, that, that leaves a sour taste in your mouth as a program. And, uh, you know, I, getting one as many as the years as it took in the program history to get one, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see that they got the second one in two and two years. And so, now uh, they've been here what, four out of five years and, and one two, so a little sweeter, just a just a hair bit sweeter when you get here and you actually win it. And uh, you know, for Mines, it shouldn't diminish all the greatness that they accomplished this year. It's another step forward. Matoka, how did he get away from that? Matoka magic. And he's able to at least get rid of the ball, though he underthrew Johnston. That was rather Mahomesian for a few seconds as Matoka avoided what would have been the seventh sack. Well, somehow he gets out of this. And we've said that so many times this year when you've watched him. You think he's down, and uh, he's so slippery, gets out, and he's not able to quite throw as accurate as a pass as he usually does. but. I think it's one thing that Ferris State has done a great job of today in their rush lanes is just kind of keeping them within the pocket. There's a completion to McLeod. Spun down for first down and a gain of 14. Those of you looking for the Geico State Champions Bowl Series, high school football, which will be following us, that just kicked off on ESPN News. That event will head to ESPNU after we're done. 345 away from that for the second national championship in the bag for Ferris State. Play fake Matoka loads up for a long throw. Carp came back to it. And Mason Carp, according to the line judge, made the catch. According to Ferris State, no chance. And Vincent Cooley is saying there is really no the way he catch. made that catch. First down. That's an impressive throw if he did catch this. Falling off to your left side, ball's already on the other side of the field. Well, you gotta have a lot of arm strength to get that ball across the field. And it's gonna go to review. You can see Matoka a little upset they didn't snap Time the out. ball sooner. Ferris State, third and final of regulation. Not going 30 to seconds in length. Review yet, maybe Ferris State took a timeout just to give the replay official a little more time. Yamatoka and Colorado School of Mines 
played this year like every game was a must win after an 0 2 start. Not a lot of three loss teams make the Division II postseason. They won out after those two three point losses, winning 13 games in a row. School record for wins, first time Mines has played 16 games in a season. It's not just the first championship game appearance for Mines football, it is the first championship game appearance for any Mines athletic program. They do have three national titles in men's cross country, including one this year, but cross country there's not a championship game. So in terms of sports with a bracket, Colorado School of Mines has never played in a national championship game until today. Yeah, you could feel, we were staying at their hotel last night. I mean, the amount of Mines fans that came down here, they were also staying at the hotel. You could, you could tell and see how much it meant to the community and the university. Traveling down here, a lot of former players here for the game, and uh, talking with Brandon Moore right there, head football coach of Mines, yesterday. But, uh, where they've come from to begin the year, I mean, this is his first year as a head coach here at Mines, and they start off 0 2 and rattle off 13 in a row to get to this game. Matoka's intercepted. Jovan Bayless has the second pick for Ferris State today. The senior with his first, some icing on a championship cake. Matoka didn't throw a lot of interceptions coming into this game, only six the entire year. He's had two today. And it's a sprint out action to the left, thrown back across his body just a little bit to Josh Johnston. And just lose the sight of, of Bayless in that zone window. And what has been a remarkable and historical year for John Matoka winning the Harlan Hill D2 Heisman Award last night. It's uh, been a little bit of a sour ending to him. But here's a kid who has an opportunity to come back next year and uh, really achieve and do a lot of great things. Offensive player. Injured player is Brennan Swayjack, Ferris State tight end. And Ferris has changed quarterbacks again. Evan Cummins is the new QB. There's Mitchell on the sideline, Golker along with him. And it's Cummins, who's played in 12 games this year, he's thrown 83 passes, 55 carries, started a handful of games early when Mitchell was hurt. Plays some tight ends, some running back, and he'll take the snaps of quarterback for the rest of this one. On a speed sweep, Amari O'Brien. Looking like C.J. Jefferson, looking like Brady Rose. O'Brien picks up eight. The speed sweeps have been good at Ferris State today, haven't they? I mean, between Brady Rose, who's carried a lot of them, and now Amari O'Brien, they, they've kind of got to the edge, and when they pin down some of those outside linebackers or defensive ends, when they've got leverage on the perimeter, they've been able to create some explosive plays on these speed sweeps. Third championship game in the last four seasons for Ferris State. Looking for a second straight national title. Third down, it'll be kept by Cummins, and he's got a first down. Mines rolled through the playoffs, rolled through much of the regular season. They have found out today that the national championship game moves pretty fast. Back-to-back -back national champions, making a lot of people proud. Some great Ferris State football history. Have a number of players in the NFL right now. There are going to be some more from this team in all likelihood. And it is kneel down time for the Ferris State Bulldogs. The celebration is beginning on the sideline, and there is the Gatorade bath. The second straight year 
that ends in a Gatorade bath for Tony Anise. Tell you what, the Wolverines have some big shoes to fill in a college football playoff because this right here, this college football program is the pride of Michigan at the moment. There's a little shove, a couple of flags are down. You don't want to see this. Don't want to see anything ugly mar the end of the game. A push from one of the Mines players. Obviously, it's a frustrating game. But it is an oh-so-sweet ending for Tony and East. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 95, defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. That's the first unsportsmanlike, number 95. I go back to what Tony and East told us yesterday. We asked him, what does it take to be a championship program? He said, love is the catalyst of our greatness. Look at the love on the Ferris State sidelines right now. Yeah. And just how they got here, doing it a little different this year. You know, you, last year they were so high powered offensively with a great quarterback and a lot of seniors. They lose a lot of those guys this year. They had to get a little Since bit the more creative. Since the clock to stop with un one under one minute to go, the penalty includes a 10-second runoff. Reset the game clock to 43 seconds. 4-3, please. Clock starts on my signal. A little more run-oriented this year, backed by a great defense. And we knew coming into the day we were going to get a great offensive matchup versus a great defensive matchup. And great defense for Ferris State, one. One more kneel down, we'll seal it. Let the celebration begin for a second straight year. It is Ferris State's world in Division Two. The Bulldogs from Big Rapids are the national champions. Ferris State fans came a long way to get here, rush the field. Their Bulldogs go back to back in Division II, the first two national championships in school history. 58 17 a season ago against Valdosta State in a game that felt just as dominant today. 41 14 the final against Colorado School of Mines.